All right, I threw this video together because a common problem I see when I'm tutoring students in calculus one on one is that sometimes if something looks like a product rule or looks like a quotient rule, students automatically go for the quotient rule or product rule. And the problem with that is that sometimes the product rule and the quotient rule get really, really, really nasty in terms of huge amounts of algebra, tons of canceling, tons of everything, right? If you're watching this video, you've probably already seen these two puppies and you know how nasty they can get. But a trick that teachers will pull is they will give you a problem that looks like it probably needs the quotient rule or the product rule, which in fact can be solved much easier by doing a little bit of algebra on it first. So here's one that looks like it might be the power rule. We got a two, we got this. Now I just got done doing several videos where I told you the power rule is awesome. It's easy, it's wonderful. You know, why wouldn't you want to do the power rule? Well, the problem with the power rule is if you can do the power rule and whatever's in the parentheses under the power is not just an x, it's got like an x minus one in this case, now you have to do the chain rule also. And the chain rule is really the thing that makes the, uh, the other rules so much nastier to work with. So, what we'd love to do, and the trick on this one, is just to foil it out first, and then you'll just have a polynomial, because polynomials are the only thing that's easier to do than the power rule, right? So what I'm going to do is, I'll just leave the 4 out front, but then I'll have to foil it out. So I'll get x squared, and if you're not good at taking foil of squares, you can just write down x minus 1 times x minus 1, and just foil it out that way. The shortcut, whenever you have a binomial like this squared, is just square the first term, then to get that middle term, you're just going to take the 2 times the second term times the first term. So that's going to be 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, times x is negative 2x. And the last term is going to be the second term squared. So negative 1 squared is positive 1. All right, so that equals 4x squared minus, two, oops, minus 8x plus 4. And now we've got something we can take the derivative of real easily because it's polynomial. So by the power rule, there's just 8x minus 8. Not necessarily a ton easier than having done the power rule and the chain rule, but there's other times when it really will save you a boatload of time. All right, here's the product rule. It looks like it should be the product rule, but hey, if you don't know the product rule yet and you don't want to do the chain rule, which can be nasty, well, let's just really quickly foil it out. So we'll get x cubed plus 3x squared Oops, minus 2x minus 6. Now it's just a polynomial, 3x squared plus 6x minus 2, and of course the derivative of a constant is 0, so we're already done. Next up, the quotient rule is actually the one you want to avoid the most. So the power rule, even with the chain rule, the power rule is not that bad. Even with the chain rule, the product rule isn't that bad. The quotient rule is the one where if I was you, I would always be trying to figure out a way to simplify your way out of it first. Just because the quotient rule is, ah, like I said, I use the word nasty a lot in this chapter, and that's kind of true. Throughout calculus, I mean, the bugaboo is not the calculus itself. The calculus itself, you can memorize that. It's plug and shot. But the, uh, the algebra and the simplification and all the foiling and the canceling, and oh my goodness, that's where calculus will knock you on your butt if you have a hard teacher or if you're planning on taking the AP test, man, that's where it's gnarly. All right, so why don't we need the quotient rule on this puppy? Well, this is a special case. Because I have the power of x downstairs, and it's just x. It's not like x plus 1 or x squared minus 6 or anything. Because it's just an x, I can basically split up this mess into four separate fractions. So what I'm going to do is turn this into an x cubed over x minus 2x squared over x plus 5x over x plus 1 over x. Now you might be asking me, hey Chris, why'd you do that? Because now you have four quotient rules. Well, now these are really easy to see they cancel, right? x cubed over x is just x squared. Negative 2x squared over x is just negative 2x. 5x over x is just positive 5. And 1 over x is obviously just 1 over x, which is x to the negative 1. Again, x to negative 1, not the nicest thing I've ever seen, but at least it's not the quotient rule. And now I can use the product, the power rule on these real easy. Derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative of negative 2x is negative 2. Derivative of 5 is 0. And then derivative of x to negative 1 is just move the power out front. So you got negative 1 times 
x negative 2. So making this look pretty, 2x minus 2 minus x to negative 2. All right, are we fascinated? Pretty cool, right? All right, that's a trick that'll really come in handy. The quotient rule is just so terrible. Um, don't need the quotient rule again. Yeah, so this is the exact same situation. I've got sort of a single term in the denominator, which makes it pretty likely that the breaking up in a separate track uh, fractions trick will work. So we got um, 2x squared over, now this is the key thing, square root of x is just x to 1 half. So I'm going to write it like that to make it more obvious what I'm about to do here. And plus 1 over x to the 1 half. All right, so we subtract exponents. So 2x squared over x to the 1 half is going to leave, you sort of take away a half from that exponent. You get 2x to the 3 halves. And then 5x divided by x to the 1 half is 5x to the 1 half because just x exponent of 1 minus the 1 half downstairs gives us a 1 half left over. And then that one's just x to the negative 1 half. Again, negative exponents, we can do the power rule. So 2 times 3, we just take the old power, move it out front. So that's 2 times 3 halves is 6 halves. And I'll just write it out. 2 times 3 halves x to the new power is 1 half plus 5 times old power to the new power. Just one less. And then plus old power down front, oops, negative 1 half, x, and then negative 1 half minus 1, negative 3 halves. Sweet. So now we just multiply through. Halves cancel, so we get 3x to the 1 half plus 5 halves x to the negative 1 half minus 1 half times x to the negative 3 halves. And you might be thinking, hey, Chris, that seemed pretty painful. What did we really save ourselves? Well, try this with a quotient rule and get back to me. You will, you will think that this it looks like a, a walk in the park compared to what would happen with a quotient rule. And there's one last problem. I sort of goes in the same vein, you know, what can you cancel? Well, let's say we had x plus 2 times x plus 1 over x plus 1, and somebody asks you to find the derivative of that. Don't need the quotient rule, right? Because you could just do this. Well, by the same token, you should always try and factor first, because that same problem, x squared plus 3x plus 2 over x plus 1, not so obvious that it would cancel, is it? But this problem right here is the exact same thing as this. I just foiled out the top first. So if you ran into this thing down here, you'd, it sure looks like a quotient rule again, but you might be looking at the top saying, huh, that might factor to have an x plus 1 in it, and the x plus 1 would cancel the x plus 1, and it would be really simple. I would just have an x plus 2 to take the derivative of, which is 1. So again, we'll look to simplify first because the quotient rule, not your friend.